guys, how you doing? Nick White, owner of Off Leash Canine Training. And today is our first ever video blog. That's right, we decided we're gonna start trying to do weekly video blogs talking about various topics and subjects and training techniques and tips for all of you guys out there uh, who follow us on YouTube and on Facebook. So, I was really trying to decide what I wanted to make our grand entrance with with our first video blog. And I decided we're gonna do it on housebreaking slash crate training your puppy. This is something that we get asked about on a daily basis with two, three, four, five, even six and eight month old puppies, which is pretty crazy to me. Um, when the housebreaking crate training process is properly done, the dog should pretty much be accident free and 100% housebroken by right around the age of four months, maybe even sooner. Um, so that's what we're gonna discuss today is how to housebreak your dog, all the do's and don'ts, and um, troubleshoot all the issues that you're having when you're in the housebreaking process. So the first thing we're going to talk about is picking the perfect crate for your dog. Um, that's, that's something that a lot of people tend to have trouble with. The, the thing we hear a lot is, well, I want to make sure he's comfortable when we're gone. I want to give him enough space. I don't want to feel like he's confined or trapped in a little crate. Um, when you're going through the housebreaking process, it's really, really important to actually have a crate that's the right size for your dog. For example, you would want to have a small eight-week-old puppy and a large uh, Great Dane crate, for example. Um, so how do you know when you have the right crate for the size of your dog? First, I always recommend people get a crate that has a divider. A lot of crates you can get on the market now come with a divider, so what you can do is you can get one large crate and use the divider and section off a part of the crate. So as the dog grows, you can give him more and more space without buying a small crate, then a medium crate, then a large crate. Um, so start with a large crate with a divider and section it off. All you really want to do is you want to give your puppy enough room so he has room to spin around, stand up without his back touching, and lay down. He really shouldn't have much more room than that. For example, you shouldn't have the dog where he has the front of the crate this much and the crate's this big. If you start doing that, what will actually happen is your pup will go to the back of the crate and use the restroom and then come to the front because that's allowing him to stay away from it. Um, dogs don't like to go to the restroom and the crate that they're in, but if they have enough room where they can get away from it, then they will go to the restroom in there because they really don't have to deal with it. So that's the first thing. Ensure that your crate is the proper fit for your dog and he doesn't have too much room in there. Now that you have the right crate, what should go in the crate with the puppy? I'm a huge advocate against putting any type of bedding, pillow, blankets, anything like that in the crate with a small puppy. That's for a couple of reasons. Generally, the first reason is the puppy will probably shred it eventually. You're going to come home and have cotton balls and uh, thread and everything shredded in your crate. I'm sure most of you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's the first reason they're simply going to destroy it. A lot of the times that mattress or pillow or blanket can actually act as a diaper or an absorbent for the puppy. So what will happen is they'll still go to the restroom in the crate because that bedding or pillow is actually absorbing that. So they still don't have to deal with it. So it kind of acts as like a diaper. So if you put that stuff in there, the puppy may and probably will still go to the restroom in the crate, which is hindering the housebreaking process. To me, the most important reason is if you put that nice fluffy um, pillow or that nice fluffy dog bed in there and the puppy's chewing on it for the eight hours you're gone, a lot of those things have cotton inside of it. So as he's chewing on it and shredding it, if that cotton gets stuck inside of his throat, it could cause him to suffocate or choke and no one's there to see or hear that. And by the time you get home, the worst could have happened. So I'm a really big advocate against just leaving the flat metal tray in there. That's all the dog really needs. Uh, many people who actually put bedding or blankets in there actually find that the dog will uh, shovel all the blankets and pillows to the side and they'll still lay on the plastic because the bedding and blankets are warm um, and the nice plastic bottom is nice and cool. So a lot of times they dig it out of the way just to lay on the plastic. 
Um, what I always like to tell people is if you're putting a, a blanket or a pillow or anything like that in there for your pup, you're really doing it more for you to make yourself feel better. And you're really not doing it for the dogs. The dogs don't need it. A lot of dogs don't want it. And it can be a safety hazard. And it can um, help deter the housebreaking process by acting as an absorbent. So that's a really big thing, just your simple plastic bottom in the crate. They really don't need much more than that. Now the third thing we're gonna talk about, um, leaving toys or anything like that in the crate. If you really wanna leave a toy or uh, a tug or a ball or something like that in the crate, really make sure it's something that's much bigger than the dog's mouth. Don't leave a small ball in there, um, allowing the dog to choke on it while you're gone. Um, so I would use like a large Kong, fill it with peanut butter, something like that. So that way you know that he can't choke on it, you know he can't chew it, make sure it's an indestructible toy, that's why Kongs are usually pretty, uh, work pretty well. The housebreaking process in itself, um, this is kind of where we're getting the meat and potatoes of housebreaking. Again, as I said, I'm a huge fan of using a crate. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the, the pee pads, the doggy pads, because when you use a pad, essentially what you're doing is you're still teaching the dog they can go to the restroom in the house. You're just saying, try to go to the restroom in this small one foot by one foot square, which is a much, much harder concept to teach the dog than you're never allowed to go inside the house, no exceptions. Also, the problem with teaching a puppy to go inside the house, that eight week old, 12, 15 pound Labrador, Golden Retriever, Pitbull, Rottweiler, whatever breed you have, is gonna turn into a 60, 70, 80, 100 plus pound dog. So if you really want a 100 pound Rottweiler go in the restroom in the house and now you come home and you have to clean that every day for the next 14 years or 15 years. So again, I'm a really big advocate against um, using the pee pad. So the, the crate training process, how it works. The biggest golden rule in crate training when you're trying to housebreak your dog is what I call 100% supervision. That's right, I'll say it again, 100% supervision. If your dog is not 100% accident-free, housebroken, anytime they're outside of that crate, you need to have 100% supervision. If you're downstairs in the living room with your pup, he's down there, you're gonna run upstairs and take a shower, back in the crate. If you're gonna run downstairs and fold laundry, back in the crate. That's really, really important, because as you all know, you can supervise him for four hours and that two minute window that you leave, what's gonna happen? That's when he's gonna go to the restroom in the house. So 100% supervision is probably the single biggest secret in crate training your dog. So what to do if your dog does go to the restroom in that house? Again, if you were sticking to the 100% supervision rule, then you saw him go to the restroom in the house or you're seeing him in the action of going to the restroom in the house. All you do is give a nice, loud, verbal no, nice, loud, and firm, run over, pick him up, run him outside, and set him down in the grass. And then I'm a huge fan of using a key word like go potty or potty. Anything works. Um, generally, we use go potty. So once I yell no, I'm going to scoop him up, set him down outside, and I'm going to go, go potty, go potty. Let him finish going. Once he finishes, praise him, good boy, good boy, and then bring him back in the house. That's really all you're doing for a correction, is a nice verbal correction of the word no. I'm a huge advocate against you know rubbing the dog's nose in it or hitting him with the newspaper. All of those things are things that are proven to not work and they can actually hurt the process. Yeah. Retro punish a dog. Meaning you can't have went downstairs, folded laundry, come up, see who went to the restroom in the house and do or say anything about it then. Um, it's pretty much too late. Chalk it up as a loss and a failure on your part because you aren't giving him 100% supervision and move on. That's why that supervision is very, very, very important. As I always say, unless your dog's 100% housebroken, they should literally never ever be able to go inside of the house without you catching them in the act. If they did, that's a failure on your part, not on the dog's part. Another thing I'm gonna discuss is the food and water. Um, if you, I'm a huge fan of feeding puppies on a schedule, meaning you feed them at 7 a.m. and at 5 p.m. Feeding on a schedule versus free feeding. When you free feed, it's really hard for your puppy to get on a, a schedule to go to the restroom. So if you feed them on a schedule, it gets the restroom on a pretty good schedule as well. Um, a good rule of thumb is to take them out to the restroom on your own an hour or two after they ate and about 20 minutes after they drank a good amount of water. 
That's a really good rule to stick by. Um, also, you can cut off the puppy's food and water at 7 p.m. So by the time you go to bed at about 10 p.m., you let them out for the last time. It helps get all that out of their system, and then you can go to bed at night. Something we've all experienced is you let your puppy out to the restroom in the morning. You try to encourage him to go. He doesn't go. He doesn't go. He doesn't go. After a little bit, you finally bring him back in, and about five minutes later, what happens? He's squatting to pee in the living room, um, and you get really annoyed because you said, hey, I just had you out for 20 minutes. Why, why did you wait till you came in? So what I'm a huge fan of doing is take him out to the restroom in the morning. You're using that good, solid keyword. That's really important uh, because that's how your dog's going to start letting you know that he has to go to the restroom, which we'll come back to in a second. So if you take your dog out first thing in the morning and he doesn't go, what I will do is I'll bring him in and put him right back in the crate. I'll wait about 15 minutes and then I'll take him outside again. Go potty, go potty, go potty. If he doesn't go, right back inside, right back in the crate. And I'll repeat that process until he finally goes outside and then I'll let him stay out with the family. Essentially what that does, it teaches your puppy, is you're just gonna keep going back into the crate until you go to the restroom. So what he learns is the first time you let me out, I'm just going to go to the restroom so I can go out and be free and have the run of the house essentially with the family. So if he doesn't go to the restroom that first time, bring him in, back in the crate, 15 minutes later repeat and just keep repeating that cycle until he goes outside. Nice good praise, good boy, good potty, good potty, and now he can stay in the house. And what you'll learn is as that process goes on, within a short amount of time, that first time you take him out, he'll go to the restroom because he's going to learn. If not, you're just going to keep putting me back in the crate until I do. Using a keyword. There's a lot of methods and different techniques you can do in order to teach your dog to let you know when he has to go out. I'm a really big fan of using a keyword for the pup. Uh, anytime I take a dog outside from the day I get it um, until it's 100% housebroken, I always use a keyword. I usually use go potty, very simple. So as the dog's walking around sniffing, I'm repeating go potty, go potty, go potty. As soon as he squats and starts to go, I give a nice big praise. Good boy, good boy. Give him a lot of praise and a lot of attention. So what happens when you do that continuously, you fast forward a month or two. All of a sudden, you see him starting to sniff around the house, tail perked up. You know, you'll, you'll recognize the signs. And all of a sudden you say, Rex, do you got to go potty? He instantly recognizes that key word and he takes off running to the door. And now that's how he starts letting you know that he has to go outside. So that's one method that you can do in order to help the dog teach you when he has to go out. Another method is a bell on a string. It's very simple. You Essentially you take a string, hang it from the doorknob, put the bell at about the dog's paw level. Every time you take the dog outside, pick up his paw, make him ring the doorbell, give him a lot of praise, and then open the door and let him out. If you repeat that every single time you take the pup out, what he'll start to do is associate and ringing that bell with the door opening. So now all of a sudden when he has to start to get ready to go outside, he'll walk up, hit the bell because he's learned that's what opens the door to release him to go outside. So that's another very simple and effective method which allows your dog to let you know when he or she has to go outside of the restroom. In closing, if you have a properly fitted crate for your dog, enough for him to spin around, lay down, and stand up without his back touching, there's no bedding or pillow inside of the crate, allowing it to act as an absorbent. You're feeding him on a set schedule and cutting off food and water a few hours before you go to bed. And you're giving your pup 100% supervision, catching him 100% of the time in the act. You should have a very short housebreaking process.